be consistent. Um, you know, it's cliche now, but like it's so important. Sometimes you have to force yourself into that habit that you start and stop. You're watching or listening to The Formula, where young professionals tell their stories and pay it forward by sharing the top lessons that they've learned in their careers. Welcome to another episode of The Formula. This is a show where we bring on professionals to share their career stories, their career journeys, and then also share the biggest lessons that they've learned in their career so far. All right, so you know the drill. I'm not going to do too much of an introduction to the next guy. I'm going to let him introduce himself, although I'm sure you probably know him already, right? So without further ado, please welcome Mr. Roshane Berry, a.k.a. Dutty Berry. How are you doing today, Roshane? Um, I'm doing good. I like a bit hungry, but you know, I just like go hungry for yeah. success and hungry for yeah. food in my stomach. But yeah. I'm glad to be here on the podcast. Um, who am I? I am a people that consider in a Jamaica a veteran YouTuber, social yeah. media person in space. Why veteran seem rough, you know? But yeah, I mean, I, you're doing it longer than most still, you know. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. My, my, my running funny thing before it, it was like a, a thing. You get me? Yeah, before it was yeah. a thing here. Um, and so yeah, I've been I've been doing YouTube for probably around ten years now. Um, I um, consider myself a social media personality. I'm a lover mm-hmm. of culture, pop culture in specific, and I like to do social commentary. And over the years, I've been fortunate enough to develop a relationship with Corporate Jamaica, so I've been able to work with a lot of brands. I think I'm probably one of the first local influencers to really have that sort of relationship with Corporate Jamaica. We're working with, you know, from everywhere between the city of Jamaica to Flow with YVAs to um, J and GI, just so many different organizations. I can't even recall, um, but I've been fortunate enough to do that at the moment. Um, I have, you know, almost 250,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. And recently I won the Prime Minister Youth Award for Excellence. So Excellent. that's a, I, I, but I you try don't play the veteran thing. 250,000 YouTubers is not, yeah. is not Trump change, you know, like that's a- I'm, Yeah, for real. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, you know the YouTube stuff go on and off. So like when I when I think about it, I feel like why if I if I was only consistent, <laughs> if I was only consistent earlier, because you know starting out there weren't a lot of YouTubers, uh, and so that was like not a big motivation. So when I think of the number, I'm like, oh, I really wish, I really wish I had really um been very serious with it from the onset. Uh huh, man. But I mean, that's one. That's quite an intro. To, I mean, I know that, you know, people who didn't know you before, which I, I, I'm not sure who's going to be watching who didn't know Dr. Bear before, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, but the people who didn't know you before, they're definitely going to look you up now, um, you know, because I've been watching the social media countdown for a good while now, you know, so mm-hmm. I, you know, every now and then I pick it up, you know, so so that's, that's, that's wicked. So over the course of your career as a YouTuber, as a social media influencer, you know, and even, even so media professional, you know, you mentioned you work with corporate as well, you know, mm-hmm. which... A lot of people try to get into, you know, that's the that's that's kind of the game when they when they reach, you know, media personality status. They want to get in with the different brands and work with them. You know, mm-hmm. how do you how do you well one, you know, stay on top of trends? Because like you say, you're into pop culture, you know. So how do you stay on top of pop culture, you know, stay in the know, um, to be able to even do your your, your countdowns? And then two, how do you stay relevant? Like oh, good questions. Um one, I love, this is something that I, that I absolutely love. I, you know, starting out, I wanted to be a doctor. I don't know how that would work out. Um, because, <laughs> you, you know, the, you have the look, the glasses and... Yeah, and, and everything. Dr. Berry would have really sound cool. You get me? <laughs> or Dr. Dotti, would have been very cool. <laughs> you know, but yeah, so I did have the little vibe there. And, um, but then I realized I never loved it. The thing that I would do, I would literally stay up and watch the BET Awards, the MTV Video Music Awards, like every award show, every red carpet, everything about. When I love people business, but I love this idea of like um, entertainment journalism. I just did things that uh-huh. cool. You get me? And Jamaica never really had a space for that um, when I was growing up, and so I would just look at and see what's going on in America. You know, e e e e. I think e news and stuff like that, and read like the tabloids. And I was just like, wait, this is interesting. I'd love to really bring this sort of vibe to Jamaica and to the Caribbean. Yeah. And um, so it is just something I love. So I follow it up every 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 day. So I'm on most of the social media pages that talk yeah. about the stuff. Them so from the tropics to the dear dream to the pink wall to the to the you name it oh, to the right. quest <laughs> times like all over. 
because it's just interesting and i love i love i love you know jamaica always have something new going on there's yeah, always yeah. Some view, there's always and then twitter always having some philosophical conversations there's always <laughs> something new and dynamic to be you know fascinated by and i realized that here what if i want to do it i don't want to kill so the, 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 the thing i don't know if i can say you know kill is but i i because i'm also kind of nerdy so i'm like wait i we have a, a, a Jamaican tradition of like talking about Anansi stories and you have the Louis yeah. Bennett. It's like a, a part of us culturally. Mix up, quote unquote, and just like sharing. It's just a, it, it's a, it's, 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 it's a tradition. And so I wanted to kind of make it a little bit more refined now and just basically talk about stuff, connect the culture. So if it was, you know, when I'm doing something about, you know, Tess and Chin and I'm making a reference, I want to take something from a music video that maybe your grandmother might have mentioned and say, okay, this is something from when Bob Marley did do this in a in a in a in a, in a one love, and I'll yeah. connect it to something with Cartel did do. So then you have this intergenerational type of thing where everybody we're all talk about the story, but then there are these little cutaways and these things that people can draw draw on. And yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so I really love love it. You know, I get excited. I mean, I'm gonna be my ear say something I'm ready for to think about the content. As yeah. it relates to the staying consistent and and being re relevant i mean you know it's rough and i have to remember that it's okay not to be hot uh, it's okay to understand that, that, that rough, you know. but always being at a race you get uh, me now, because yeah, if yeah. you buy one cheese party right now from wherever you come from and you might, it might take a little while you have the party and you might be busy at your work and when you, you do the party you might end up cold you get me that i mean said still it tastes good all it needed yeah. up, and also somebody put in the microwave for 30 seconds and it good to go again. <laughs> yes, still have it. And so sometimes yeah. I have to really realize say, so, yo, I have my moment, and everybody who come now, they're gonna act to the point where everybody be like, Jesus, I'm gonna do the baddest thing, and then they're gonna just come get replaced now, but they uh -huh. will still be there. What, what you don't want to do is that you just drop all the way down and you lose your consistency. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. what end up happening now is that people feel say because they're not hot, that means they're not good. That mm. just means uh, the eyes, them, and the attention of the moment. It's just like a new relationship. You know, yeah. you're doing, the first part is like the same little conversations. Oh, my yeah, God. Honeymoon phase. And... Yeah, everything fascinating. Oh, I never yeah. know. Say, yeah, you're so funny. I never know. Say, so interesting. By week, by probably like month, month eighth. It's just like, oh, okay. All right. You have a sense of humor. All right. You look pretty like, okay. We have a kind of get to work with now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get me? So yeah, I think yeah, yeah. the same thing for a lot of content creators and for me is to just remind myself that, yo, um, I've been doing this for a long time. I've, I've had my moment now. So I just want to like level up now. So mm. it's like, how can I do these other things? Which is why I started my social media countdown because I'm like, yo, that's my program. That's my thing. The same yeah. way how Winford Williams have on stage and um what's that um guy ian boyne had profile, had profile and yeah. you know entertainment report with with with, with um anthony yeah, miller anthony, and yeah. all of these different people and ellen of our ellen show wendy of our wendy williams show i'm just like yo this is my baby you get me this is my thing yeah. and i'm saying i would love to see maybe by the time a 60 year old who for tell i'm still doing it i'll probably pass it on to somebody yeah. else right here hosting on the show can continue right Oh, you know, that actually leads into the next question because, I mean, you mentioned, you know, you will be, you'll be hot and cold at different points. You just have to make sure you stay in the game, you know, but how, all right, so when you are doing your thing now, I mean, you have your social media account now, you have your YouTube channel, your, your IG profile, how do you stay motivated to do those things? You know, because you mentioned earlier that, you know, initially you, you, you weren't as consistent and then you started getting more consistent over time, yeah. you know? but how you stay motivated to do them something there? You know, like when you say when you put out a YouTube video and it don't pop, like how you how you how you stay motivated with that? <laughs> I mean, it's rough, and I, yeah, it, it's really rough. It's it's really is. You're going to take several L's. Nobody jumps into becoming a content creator without taking several L's, and it's very hard to be motivated when you're not getting the the love from the crowd. And yeah. I always tell people that you have to remind yourself of your worth because even you know I I recognize that I'm just like yo, may not bust in a moment, but I was doing YouTube well before that. To the point where me get my 50 views them is a big deal like i was like wow 50 views and that would be a big moment for me and um and so i have to remember these moments where yo i'll be doing my videos and i'm saying oh come there are other creators who did come and bust after me i'm gonna start out from before me like boy this really just kind of wow this this kind of rough <laughs> and then it just i i managed to just like you know i stopped youtube for a year already 
um, go on and off again because one, you're not getting the views, you're not getting the momentum. So you're like, why am I bother, b- bothering to do it? But then I realized that I kind of like it. But I feel like I'm the only one like it if I'm getting this big, you know, um, kudos from the public, yeah. this big fanfare and all of this thing. So when the when I continued now, and I remember it was in a particular year where I gave myself, I said, here what? I'm going to do YouTube for, for one year more. And if this don't work out, I'm going to stop this and find something else. And I gave myself an ultimatum. I'm going to say, listen, my need for really step to this a different way. I'm going to put my heart and soul into it. And mm-hmm. I did that. And I started out January the momentum build. And it wasn't until September when the entire Tessan thing happened. And what I found mm-hmm. out is that with the Tessan thing, all kind of pers- persons were like, wait, I never know say they exist all along. And then they went back to the old videos that never have no views and start to watch it. I found it interesting. So then I was just like, I was beating myself up all along thinking say, I wasn't worth anything and these videos that nobody would ever find me interesting. When all along, it was just, I just needed the eyes to focus on me at a yeah. particular time. So yeah, when yeah, I was yeah. doubting myself and feeling bad because it was only getting the 50 views or stuff like that, I already had it. The talent was already there. Yeah. It was just that I was relying upon the approval of the public to tell me whether or not I was doing something good. Yeah. And so, you you know, in order to feel motivated, you're going to drop off, but you have to remind yourself and be like, why am I doing it? And is there an audience? I have to know somebody like, yo, probably if anybody did, I would do quote-unquote mix-up. I wouldn't have had the audience that I had. You get mm-hmm. me? The Tessan mm-hmm. thing happened in a moment. And luckily, it was an illegal test and if I stay, stay on the voice for one week, Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, because I don't know. I just do a little one video and that's it. But Great. when the same thing happened, it was for probably between yeah. September to December. Yeah, so man. that allowed me to literally just like hone my skills and just kind of get myself as a part of this Jamaican space and people get familiar with me. And then yeah. right after that, Cranwater commercial came. So it's just like, I, you don't, you have to just really be consistent and find and remember why why you're doing it. And you can't, you can't depend upon the likes, the comments, and the shares to give you the motivation because it will humble you. You'll put out your best video. And when you do a video about, you probably video yourself and put up a little blooper video with your yarn and belch two times. And that's the video <laughs> you become like you're the belch and yarn guy. And you're like, look at me every week trying to perfect my lighting and all, all kind of things. And my belch in a one video for 15 seconds. And then this is what works. <laughs> okay. You know that, and I, I, I like that you put, I like that you put it like that. And I actually like that you that you bring in the humor here as well, because I mean, you know, we know that we know the the Dutton Bear personality already. So this yeah, is yeah, yeah. this is good for people to see the the mixed side of of the yeah, 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 yeah. social media countdown. <laughs> um, I actually didn't know that you had put on YouTube for a year, because I mean, me watching you, I thought you were just you know mm-hmm. straight like a consistent YouTube. You know, I didn't think I didn't know that you stopped or that you even got to that ultimatum point. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of people who are watching who never who didn't think that like they thought you were just yeah man let's yeah and it was a comment it. It, was, uh, it was it was really a comment that kind of um that hit me it was a comment on Facebook sometime and saying like hey you know see all your friends them you know graduate leave you and you did you try this YouTube thing and you know a boss and you know like it was one of those yeah. comments and it's it felt like it was all somebody who probably was not my close close friend but close yeah. enough to have seen me I remember at that point in time is like I really did that try you know like I have my little camera. I have my mm-hmm. little digital camera. You know, them time they borrow from my mother and me a girl and I'm me and try to do my little vox pop on. I never know anything about editing, never, but me did that try. Me yeah. really grown and, and I'd be around the Caremark students because I'd be like, whoa, I wasn't a part of Caremark. And I was just like, let me watch and see how them use a camera and try for the things. I used to do my video. I never used to even talk patwa because in my mind, you know, I'm parents. Can I remember them something there, you know, the family, you can't talk now. You have to talk little, you know, look at standard English. Yeah, yeah. And so I'd be doing my videos and it was really me them time there. So when I saw that comment and the comment draped me up, man, I'm here say, for real, like, what am I thinking? I'm, I'm this little nerd boy. What, what, why do I think that people would watch me and find me interesting? This person, yeah. right? And then so I stopped it. I stopped and it wasn't until I saw a comment that basically said like, hey, you know, um, my aunt was really feeling, I think it was aunt or sister was feeling sad for how many months? And she said she come home and she hear her auntie laugh. And when she look, it was one of my old videos. Her aunt was watching. Mm-hmm. And she sent me a message and said, yo, I see that you said that you stopped YouTube. Please continue because, like, you don't even know what you did to bring back my, my, my sister's joy. In yeah. this, this like a random moment. And I was just like, wait. That means uh, the video that I just think said nobody cared about. You mean for them to say, like, it actually did some good. And that alone gave me, you know, some sort of motivation. 
yeah. they're like, yeah, man, I'm ignore the naysayers. No, no, man, that's huge. That's huge. Cause that actually flows. That flows perfectly into what I'm gonna ask next, which is, you know, what are some of the biggest wins you've had on this entire YouTube journey? You know, or just just your media journey, period. Cause you yeah. you, you put up you, you told us about a broad spectrum of stuff that you don't know, yeah. you know since it started. So what what are some of the biggest wins you've had? Um, yeah, the Prime Minister Youth Award. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's like a major win. Um, getting the the play button from YouTube. Um, you know, that's for 100 people subscribers in this, in this video, like, in, like, hold it up, you, you know. It's the old <laughs> one. I'm going to go for it. Give me a second. <laughs> Give me a second. It's probably somewhere here. Oh, my God. Is this stuff at the wall? Like, as we wait. Oh, oh finally. Jesus. This thing was oh really, but yeah, so this is it. <laughs> this, right, this right here, I mean, this is big, you know, because I mean, there are a lot of, I mean, just generally YouTubers want to play, yeah. them, but like Jamaican YouTubers, I mean, this is, just forget one, it doesn't matter if it's the lowest one, I mean, they just want one, you know, so this is congrats, man. Like, this yeah, is, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know it was something I could have um had. It was when I saw my, my burritos, they kept on saying like, hey, I have to see at 100. Why you don't have a play button? I was like, what's a play button? Didn't know anything about it. <laughs> I was really doing YouTube for just the love. Found out that I had actually gotten the the, the notification like probably about a year before uh. that I should collect it and didn't realize because I, I didn't know what to expect. But yeah, so the play button was, is, is one thing as well. Um, I think really and truly one of my biggest, you know, wins is definitely kind of getting corporate Jamaica to endorse creative talents, especially from the online space. Because before that, um, it was really much just about the dancehall artists and the athletes that they just give something and you get up and you be like, you know, you, you see the athlete and athlete just like, yeah, man, black pen. Yeah, man, this is 200 meter athlete and I am endorsing black pen. <laughs> oh. That's it. Or you get the DJ, the DJ, they might jump up and say, Scissor, you know, and say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so that was just where it was, was, was catered to. But when Cranwater um, made me their brand ambassador right after the, the success of Tessan, and um, I had to script my, my, my ad myself. So it was a new space for me. And it really put me, I was in supermarkets, posters, I was doing school tours, I was all over the place. Um, it, I think it signaled to corporate Jamaica there was something new emerging. And that you can now look outside of this artist and um and this artist and athlete and, thing and, yeah. and think about having other people. And so um I you know I did a lot of stuff with them. It was just so many different companies I did stuff with. And then I remember stepping back now and looking at the field and realizing say a lot more companies did start to embrace the creators them. So from it come to like the pine to like the LED diviners to the belly the Bella Blair to the Quiet Perry to the um the Rush Cam and you see a lot of them now having yeah. that sort of you know endorsements and stuff and so yeah that's a that's a major win as well as to to bridge that gap between traditional and the new media that was something that i realized is definitely important because i'm you know i'm a group in that part where we get to see a little bit of the old we get to see like the big broadback tv we never band come see wi-fi yeah. you get me and i get yeah. to see like, things them emerge from you know like the old phone them to know you have like you know phone where people are spending on for two hundred thousand. Like who yeah. thought that, you know, like we ever spending 200,000 on a phone. And so one of my major wins is trying to connect both worlds. What I see what I'm doing as a continuation of the legacy of Louise Bennett, you know, I'm saying mm -hmm. like it had Louise I Bennett in mind. <laughs> yeah. And so, because when I, yeah, I grew, I grew, grew up while she was alive and, and got to see a bit of her. And I was just like, yo, she loved Jamaica, um, the culture and stuff like that. And I'm like, how can I? continue this in a new form you know the same oliver samuel same type of thing i'm just like yeah i want to take a little bit from traditional media newspaper tv and bring it into this like technology like my group i watch all iCarly. so i'm like can i bring <laughs> can i bring tvj news and iCarly come together and i've done the show <laughs> you know can i bring it in where it's just this nice merge, merge. A blend of of, yeah, of it nice new one yeah. yes but I realize that, you know, more, this new generation, like, you know, a lot of them get their news. And when I speak to people from the diaspora, them basically tell me, say, yo, when I watch a countdown, I'm busy. I have work, I have things I do. But when I find a little time and more I know where I'm going back to Jamaica, I just spend, spend my little 15 minutes and I just, you know, get follow up. You can't keep me up to what I go and know. Someone knows, okay, the person and the person they are, 
this Sammy in Jamaica now coffee just win the award there and them can have that 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 summary um roundup of what's going on in the Caribbean from just the countdown and I'm just like yo this is my act of of service. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, that nice 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 that's a that's a one that's a lot of wins two that's a lot of big wins um mm -hmm. and I mean boy it's a lot of commendable wins as well so following mm -hmm. on the heels of that you know what are some of the biggest losses that you've had in your career so far like I mean, there with the highs must come like some lows, right? Or are you just straight flying? I think <laughs> things, you know, well, I tried stand up comedy. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. well, wait, wait, from, all right, so I don't know if you, you, you remember, what is it? Um, when my phone was still was still around and they had their, their comedy bus. Is yeah, it, man. Comedy bus days? Or, no, or, man, or, no, man, no, <laughs> man. Not, not so far. No, man, like, man, 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 that, man, that, man, that <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I grew up watching that show and, and seeing it. But then I think what happened is that shortly after, you know, me and then some other people, there were like probably about four, four like social media influencers in the space. Oh. And I think at that time, no, people were kind of comparing like, oh, you know, and calling us comedians. I never liked the idea of comedian. You know, I just see myself as somebody interesting. The same way like we look Will Smith as like a personality, but in a scene, I go up and say, not now who's there. You know, yeah, yeah. Just, kind of, name, just a fun, you know, cool dude. That's what I see it as. But like at that time, I remember people just wanted to say that, okay, they're comedians. And I'm like, no, I have too much respect for like actual stand up comics and what they do. And I understand and I hold it in a high regard. But at the time, it was just like, hey, everybody go out and do it. And I was just like, let me just try this so I can have a good story to tell when, you know, I'm reached 90 year old. <laughs> and and so I did it a couple of times. It was Lime Comedy um, comedy Cafe, I think. And the first one was cool. I'm going to go over there, i lines and my cool cards. My cue cards, I'm a little nervous, and you know, that was that. And I remember that I did about three more, and no, it had been my would have been my one year advert anniversary since I started um doing stand-up. And I was just like, All right, it's my one year now. I really want to celebrate this moment, and this means that I'm gonna do like my best stand-up ever. And they had a day where they had it like comedians, online comedians versus like the other comedians. So they had like IT and fancy cat, pretty boy Floyd. Oh. Um, and there was like me, Ellie Diviner. I think um what's his name again? Um is Kevin too crazy was a part of it? No, I don't think he was on that show. Him. Um I think King Tavi was there oh. and it was I think Perry was in the audience and they had like all of the, the older seasoned stand-up comedians. So it was literally all the peers in the industry. You get yeah. me? Just probably Oliver Samuels alone ever there. But like people every, the, the whole entire in, um comedy fraternity and stuff like what was in a, a, attendance. And I'm going to go up there, man. I'm going to tell you, I'm up there for about 20 minutes and not one joke, not one little <laughs> chuckle. But up there, you know how bad it be? I'm up on the stage now and your own friend in my comedy, you can't even make eye contact with you because you're doing that bad. You're <laughs> feeling second and embarrassment because me, I look and I try to feel support. And when I look when I'm a bridge in here, bridge just turn around so I can in shame for me too. And it was just like nothing. Yeah, look at you see Perry face. Yeah, see, you're embarrassing yourself in front of the whole industry. Man, like, boy, I'm not getting to work after this. Never again. This is so, <laughs> so bad. It was horrible, man. And so I remember, like, afterwards, when I feel bad, when everybody want to call it the pay, I was so, that was, was like a major loss. Yeah, like, no matter, no matter, just keep it. <laughs> in front of the pay still, but like, yeah, it was it was a major flop. Um, And loss, um, dude, loss. I, mean, I don't know if I have any major. Probably personally, um, in terms of just like transitioning in, into this space of being a public figure, so you lose a bit of your freedom, and I don't, I don't think anybody prepares yourself for that. It made me a lot more empathetic to just like celebrity life, mm -hmm. and so because I'm like, boy, if me get for deal with this, me can't imagine what a Justin Bieber, Chris Chris Brown level, you know, yeah. Beyonce is because me like the little piece of it and the sacrifices that you know. In, but that really into like friendships and stuff like that is just like and people not understanding say yo you know things are changed now like no when I go out I'm like yo my friends I'm gonna can't act a certain way because if Uno go in a little store right now and decides to forgot T for one 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 box drinks for the name now make news I might <laughs> make news you can hear yeah, yeah, yeah. company Dutty Berry and yeah. <laughs> Like be and friend them just decide for mash up somebody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for say, yo, I have to understand say, yo, is a certain is it's, it's just like the weight of certain things right now. Where yeah. it's like no, you have to just know say even your company you have to kind of hold them to a certain level and, and degree, you know, and, and things change, you know. And so me are like, wow, this this I never really necessarily prepared for. And with that, you know, you're gonna just kind of lose some friends, 
because not everybody will kind of understand and kind of respect that and it's just a part of the process yeah oh oh man that's yeah uh, and that's a I, I can't imagine i can't imagine being that i mean you're at that celebrity celeb near celebrity level or celebrity level here you know um and that's a, that's a huge thing to lose that kind of freedom where you could just go out and do whatever you know you just do do whatever you feel like um all right so i could switch gears just a little bit now so in you know let's talk uh, let's let's get a little bit to the to the personal side of dutty berry you know you know roshane berry you know over the years you know there must have been some some habits and hobbies some things that you have on you know regularly in your routine that kind of either keep you sane or you know you just do them because you enjoy them you know um so what are what are some of those habits and hobbies that you have to, that you you know you feel like you have to keep um in your routine on a weekly or a daily basis um i'm very much like a homebody i don't really have a bunch of friends and most of my friends are probably like it's just like probably youtube co-workers no. if i do this, i'm very much by myself but i enjoy conversation it's like this it might seem but this is my fun no. if you like it's so for me i'll stay home probably like you know at 90 percent of the time but that 10 percent, give me a little lime you can go out mm. and go someplace and just have a group of friends i still don't have a reason and talk about like why your highs and your lows for 2020. <laughs> <And> <laughs> yeah, like, I love the type of conversation there we kind of get in here, like yo, and I love having a diverse set of friends. So we can understand everybody experience. So we can have my little one rasta friend who can tell me about like the little slashy life there. And we can say, oh man, if I look on things like that now, I might have a little church friend now. I say, boy, how you manage this? G some people really go wait until you're 40 year old before you're sex. And we're like, wow, this is so amazing. You know, <laughs> and it's like, I like these seven things. <laughs> <laughs> you get me? I so like yeah, I know these things. This is just like my fun. Outside of that, no. Occasionally, I like to party. So I like having you know, one and two friends who draw me out. I'm not the person who go and be like, "Yo, me have a drink." But you know, you look at one friend and be like, "Come on, man, come on, man, everybody, I drink, man, drink little liquor." And I'll, yeah. I'll party. You know, I'm enjoy myself. You no, know, like you know, Jeremy. I'm one of them people yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hours ago, I'm like, "Yeah, man, forward. Yeah, man, you can forward, man." And so that's usually good. You no, know, we can go out and party and you know have a little broke up moment. And I realize it's very good because um, you don't want to get up on this field. Because even though I'm a content creator, it can also feel like a nine to five if you allow it to. Where you get up mm -hmm. every day and your brain is so far out. I tell some of my friends sometimes say, "Yo, my camera this one bag a content creator friend," because sometimes it's just like it can reach a point where you see everything as content. You can't live in the moment. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would your friend. Yeah, I'm always a record something. For your friend, I'm going to walk here, everybody. Hey guys, hey, welcome to my YouTube <laughs> channel. You're like, so when do all of you go out? Everybody's so busy. When you look around, everybody are shoot them intro. Everybody, like something are happening at the moment. No, everybody are like, Jesus beam. Oh God, this would be good for one little clip for the video. And nobody, and it's just like, I'm like, no, it can become like this real something addictive drug. Where me like, you know, so some of the time they can hang and the camera yeah. not on where it's just literally. We just go out and everybody a party, I eat food and just like chill. So just understand, say, yo, this breakaway is so is so important. Outside of that, I also I love watch random YouTube videos. Um, mm. where I have, you know, like um Trevor Noah, I love them type of show there. The Daily uh -huh. Show, Trevor Noah, um, Breakfast Club. Um, I don't know what else, anything when him, you know, um daily pop. We just love stuff like that. Come like for see them little things there and kind of practice and say, um, what is show with, with Ryan Seacrest? Um, um, uh, um, the girl man, the two of them co hosted <sighs> not good man in America. Um, live, live yeah. with Kelly and Ryan, or something like that. Yeah, something like that. You wouldn't know more than me because yeah. me, me never used to keep up with them. Something <laughs> yo, I love watch me, love watch them type of stuff. There, man. So that, 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 that's like my downtime, yeah. and um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, nice. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, so you know, it is. It's almost similar to you on a regular. Um, it's just that you, 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 yeah, you're, you're, you're just, just killing. Yeah, yeah, I think that's just really it. Yeah. yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So no, this is kind of this is this is we got to this point kind of rather quickly, but this is my favorite section of the the you know the interview, the conversation. Um, so Give for those, money. Some, Whoa! Uh, was it? Say something <laughs> about giving away money. Um, I wish. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not really, not really there yet. You know, when I when I start making my corporate collaborations, and I can't, oh, 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 I can't reach yeah. there. Remember, remember me. <laughs> um, so 
Um, so for the people who are watching, right, I know for sure, because I know a lot of persons who, you know, they're on, they're either on their YouTube journey or they've been thinking about a YouTube journey, you know, um, or, or content creator journey. So for those persons who are getting in it um, or who are in it, what are three of the biggest lessons you've learned as a content creator that you feel like, all right, if they take it on, um, you know, these lessons will help you develop, you know, whether as a content creator or just as a professional going on, you know, doing your thing? um you know one of the first ones is to just like be consistent um you know it's cliche no but like it's so important sometimes you have to force yourself into that habit that you start and stop i said when i just started out i was not consistent so i must do a video in january youtube not similar back until probably like uh july you get me <laughs> and because and so you don't get a motivation especially when you're not seeing the you know you start off you feel like oh you want the likes you want the views and when you yeah. post a dead one nice video, you just say 26 views alone, man. Sometimes it can't really, and you know, the roof. <laughs> you try to get your people there, you try to get your family and your sub, your friends and your own squad to just go support and you'll be like, well, if we know 500 friends, that means that that is 500 views. No, not a box food. <laughs> you might have 500 <laughs> friends and only 10, 10 of them alone really manage the time. So you can't match it out like that and you'll get frustrated and you have up and say like, no. So be consistent just start push out when you have your videos even when you're you're lighting 100 percent and stuff do it it will improve over time um i want to find out is that people will work with you once you're consistent people want to be a part of that journey so if you start off and they don't say you have the best sound you have the best lighting if they just say continue and also they'll work with it once the content is good they will yeah. work with it, and things will gradually improve you get me yeah and so, like just be consistent once you start um, another thing is to also like research. I always said, don't jump into anything without researching. Well, if people come and it's just like they want to ask and say, like, yo, what is you know, you're like, you shouldn't be coming to me you now and asking me what you can use to edit. You can come and ask me, like, which one is better. Let's just uh -huh. say you're on the camera and be like, hey, do you think that a Nikon is better than a Sony versus the Canon? We can't understand that you might want my personal opinion. But you're supposed to do your own little research. You just jump now, do your research and find out, say, um, okay, if I can't have, what do what do I need to edit on my phone? If I'm going to be using a laptop, what are the best software out there? Familiarize yourself, know about the copyright laws. You're not supposed to come now and most people are complaining about oh people bad mind them and that's why the video get taken down. No, you posted <laughs> some nudity and profane language in your video and then get take, they got they got taken down. So yeah, like it's yeah. so aware, like research, know about things and the space before you start it. And I think just like finally, and I think it's one of the hardest things, is to really just be yourself. It takes a while. It takes a while to figure out what is yourself. Like, as I tell you, so when I started out, I started English. And that, that <laughs> was really become a feel like my mother. My mother tell me, say, yo, yeah, I represent the family. And, you know, well, I'm going to watch hear some of I try to do a little video or something. And then it's like, why you have to talk this? You got college or people are going to say, you got university and here, yeah, chat. And, and so I would be doing my things like, may I give a cash back number? And the lucky uh. mark before is <laughs> and it's just like that wasn't me it's just like hi guys welcome to my youtube channel in today's series we will be investigating how many people say fluffy girls are better than slim and it was just <laughs> wasn't, uh, it just wasn't i uh, never me i said never connect and so it was until afterwards no more realized say yo this is really me my bright you know you will pick up one and two times you'll drop in a big word but me yeah. talk the, the little pato I mean drink, me have a little one line of like yeah me know like English but this is this is just me and me very animated I just saw me talk but quiet yeah. real life but once my, once the Dutterberry character come there I just saw it happen you get yeah, me yeah, yeah. so me have to allow me have to understand so yo that is a space and me have to allow Dutterberry to be Dutterberry and I really try to control him so figure out what is you being yourself you get me if you're some people yeah you hear hear your voice you hear all your look. Yeah, all, all of these things and it will affect how you deliver the content. So take your little time when you start, get used to do your little video them, get used to yeah, hear your voice yeah. all over again. Understand, say yo, I saw my look, I saw my nose look, I saw my hear look, I just saw this set right there. So get comfortable with yourself now and um just find the things that really make you come alive. So like pop culture makes me come alive. You get me? You have to figure mm -hmm. out what makes you come alive now and wants to be in this space and lean into these issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that, I, and I was about to, I was about to ask you to go into it, you know, because when you said, you know, be, be yourself, and that it takes a while for you to be yourself, I was about to say, all right, but how you do that? Like, there are a lot of people who, 
them try something and they just give it up same time. And I mean, that affects the consistency, but like they don't give themselves enough time, you know, as you said, to figure out and get used to themselves. And most of the time, know? most of we don't know yourself. Most of we end up like all, some of the time all 19, you don't know yourself. You don't know yourself. Yeah. 20, yeah, yeah. right? All when you're 25, you get an idea. Sometimes I wait until afterwards you have a good idea of who you are and then how yeah. you're going to stand in it. So um, that's just, the, that, that, that is just one of the biggest things is trial and error. And yeah. sometimes you know, you know, but you know, feel like you can, because even made my video, I used to always want perfect. Like, me used to script, when I started having used to script my content, because I never believed someone have it naturally. Uh -huh. Again, uh -huh. so like, I'm like a nerd, I like, don't know comedy, so everything I know I write, you write down, you swat, I know about, you know, simultaneous equation, you know, um, periodic table, them stuff there, I always have to control it and say, yo, this is it. So, when I try to do this thing, I used to script, so if me I say, um, box cover, Lisa Anadina Parliament today. I'm gonna write down, all right, where you yeah, turn to the right, and then I'm putting everything, I'm putting the bracket, all right, putting one SpongeBob reference right here. So, and everything would be kind of like that, like to the point where one time I did for shoot, I'm gonna could find the people, I'm gonna write down the stuff. I'm well, shooting, yeah, I'm <laughs> like, Jesus, people. and at one point, I said, Barry, you know, these things, this is you, you've been watching these things from a younger, you can't host a program off the top of your head. You get uh, me, you can do these uh -huh. things, I trust myself, I'm gonna say. All right, this I'm used to edit every little mistake. No, I'm say, you know, the people don't like it. Say, if I make one little quick little error, I'm gonna have to beat up myself now. I'm like, oh my god, I'm supposed to look up and I look down now. Oh my god, I have to start with everything. I have to just say, yo, this is me. I made a mistake. They may just be like, it's to the point now. I say, yo, my word, my sentence, my Google stupid is not the name, so you get me. <laughs> yeah, just drop it in like it's just natural. No, sometimes I say, my rest of fire, my rest of fire, I to a nail. Some little random things that pop up like me. I'm looking at the room right now. I look at my sister, say, oh, my arm. Um, but that the clothes I want wash, you know. <laughs> <That's random. laughs> Managale, Managale, I, I'm sure, I'm sure you are one of the only persons who can get away with something like that now in any kind of in any kind of setting. <laughs> and I had to allow myself come here like I am also random like that. And somebody yeah. have to allow myself to bury this are really you, you know, like you're random, you're nervous sometimes, you get overly excited, you get flustered. Are you and the people that might actually connect with that? And it sounds crazy, but you're like, really. So like just me being regular, like like just me allowing myself to be me, people connect yeah. with it. You now I'm mean, like, oh, all right, we can kind of loosen up now, and and that's just it. But it takes a while before you realize and feel comfortable being like that because you have an idea how you want to sound sometimes, or how you want to look, and how you want to be over over professional. And so you you know you get these thoughts in your head, and sometimes it's family. You might be like, okay, I can't wear this now because I feel like I'm probably supposed to wear one jacket suit. So I don't want to wear too much t-shirt, and you have all of these things. So and not until you get to a point where you be like, you know what? And I really be as if mommy want have a problem with me not wearing a jacket suit on my YouTube channel. Okay, yeah. <laughs> if I want to do certain things and talk about certain dancehall artists, me I gonna do it. Mommy might want me to talk about like. The war in Afghanistan and talk about things where we're going on BBC news. But no, we want to talk about mix up. And this may do. And so you have to, over time, you end up trusting yourself to be yourself. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. no, man. That's like that right there. That is gold, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Boy. So unfortunately, this is the end of the conversation. I mean, because I really not, I, I don't have no more questions for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah, boy. I feel like I, I, feel like I should have. <laughs> Here's no me pretend for being at interviews, and so it's just like it just happened like clockwork. Yeah, no man. I feel like I feel like I should have a, a little more, some more stuff lined up for you. But this this was really good. This was really really good, man. Thanks a lot for coming on and sharing. You know, sharing. You know, you and your journey, and then also sharing those lessons. You know, that would help. You know, somebody at least one person in the audience. You know, I'm yeah, sure they're going to take away from it. You know, uh, so guys, this has been another episode of the Formula. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching The Formula. If you liked that episode, do me a favor, hit the like button and let us know what you thought about it in the comments. If you know someone who could use the advice or the inspiration from this video, go ahead and share the video. Share it up. Just share it up. And for more episodes in the series, please, 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 please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. I'll see you in the next one.